Hello guys, I'm back. In this video, I will talk to you about the minimum recirculation flow through a centrifugal pump. My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach students, graduate and engineers how to work with chemical process engineering and plant design. When we talk about centrifugal pumps, one of the documents most very important to evaluate the specification of the pump or the performance of the pump is the pump curve. In this document, in this drawing or graph, we will find three important areas. The first imp important area is the best efficiency point. This is the point around the middle of the curve where we select the operating conditions or where the operating conditions of your pump or the service that you are selecting it should be around. Another region that is important to evaluate is from the right of the pump. As you go to the right of the pump, you decrease the head and you increase the flow. But if you increase too, too much the flow or if you decrease too much the resistance of the system, your flow will increase too much. And because of that, you will get a region of high vibration and you don't want to operate on that, on that region. Another region that is very important to evaluate is the region to the left of the pump, near to the shoot top of the pump. If your pump operates near this region, you will get also problems with vibration and you will have also problems of temperature. The temperature of your fluid may increase and with that damage the internals of the pump. So one thing that you can do to avoid the risks of having your pump operating near the shoot-off condition is using a minimum, a minimum flow valve or a strategy or a control to, have, to guarantee that your pump will have a minimum flow through it and it, it will not get near to the shoot-off. There are many ways to do that. When you see a pump curve in your, in your graph, we are considering the curve related to a specific speed. So each curve that you have in a pump chart is for a specific, a specific speed. If you change the speed, the curve the, the points of operations in the curve will change. So one way that you can use to change the minimum required or the minimum region, the region to the left of the, your pump curve is using a speed drive. Another thing that you can use considering a speed, a speed velocity, you can use a manual valve or you can use a control valve to have the minimum flow guarantee to your pump. If the discharge of your pump increases the pressure, it will, uh, it will increase the head and the head will, as the head increases, your, your curve will go this way to the left and you will incre decrease the, vol the, the flow. And because of that, you can have disturbance in, inside your pump. And to avoid it, you can, for instance, have a control valve that will open based on the discharge pressure and guarantee the minimum recirculation. So there are many ways to avoid this kind of situation. But it's important to you understand how to do that. And this, the, 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 the philosophy of control will be shown in your piping and instrumentation diagram. So as a chemical process engineer that wants to work with chemical process engineering plan design, you need to know how to perform the heat and material balance related to your unit of, of operations, in this case, the pump. You can use process simulation software, spreadsheets, and etc. You will get those information and transfer to a specification data sheet in order that you can rec receive from the supplier information to select your pump. And you need also to develop drawings. One of the drawings will be the process flow diagram and the other one will be the pipe instrumentation diagram where you show the controls of your unit in details. So if you have a 
pressure transmitter, if you have a PIC, if you have a control valve, or if you have a manual valve that will be hand, uh, hand calibrated or hand turning, all of that will be shown in your pi piping instrumentation diagram. And there are ways, there are cases where you need to install a pressure relief device in the discharge of a centrifugal pump. If you want to know how or when you need to do that, take a look in the video that we will appear to you right now. This is it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.